All right, what's up, you guys? So we're going to do a, a handful of stories here, right? We're going to open with one about Poirier and Connor, and we're going to end with one about Poirier and Connor because I think it is incredible to look at the dichotomy between these two guys and just their approach to the fight game because the, the first one we're going to look at is Dustin Poirier discussing Conor McGregor's pinky toe injury and him pulling out of the fight. And the last one is going to be Conor McGregor talking about Dustin Poirier's charity and uh, making some pretty serious accusations uh, about the charity with no evidence whatsoever. So uh, I'm going to talk about those two sides. We're opening there and we're ending there. In between, I want to show uh, an, an interaction between Rampage Jackson and Joe Rogan. And also, um, there was another one. I Oh, I wanted to show some of the stuff uh, Strickland said about Hamza just like in an actual video. And then I'll touch on some of the stuff I talked about in my live stream yesterday because I, I went live talking about um, the the fact that Hamzat's team went public, you know, or not. I'm sorry. Well, I don't know. I actually don't know if it's his team or not. It's the guys who actually ran the smash coin. They went public. They actually put out a statement and I covered it in my live stream. But then the live stream is now in members only. So there's a lot of people who haven't seen me talk about it. And I want to talk about it because those guys are liars, man. Like those guys are lying straight up. Those guys are lying. There's just no two ways about it. So uh, that's that's what we're doing. And uh, I would appreciate it if you guys would subscribe to the channel. If you don't mind, join this thriving community. I would really appreciate it. That is my, uh, that's my go-to analytic to know that I'm doing a good job and we've had some great growth. So I appreciate you guys. And then like this video, video. Uh, all right, so here is where we're starting right now. All right, so Poirier talking about Conor McGregor's pinky toe and... Uh, you know, again, the dichotomy between these two guys is absolutely unbelievable. And by the way, before you guys put it in the comments, I mean, you can put it in the comments. The reason my Foz looks like this is because I'm leaving for Mexico tomorrow. I'm going to be gone for six nights. I'm going to do my best while I'm there to at least put out a few videos where I just sit down, shoot a video, post them. Kind of like how Chael does when he's on vacation. I don't do that enough when I'm gone. So that I'm going to, you know, like, I'm, I'm not going to be this color. This is I'm going to wash this off, but that's why I look like uh, somebody dipped me in like brown paint. That's kind of exactly what you're looking at. Anyway, all right, let's rock and roll. Here is Poirier talking about Conor McGregor's pinky toe injury and whether or not it was legit to pull out of the fight. I think. Poirier also weighed in on McGregor's pinky toe injury and questioned whether the injury was serious enough to withdraw from UFC 303. Conor Chandler fight, it, it got canceled a couple of days later. How do you feel about how all that played out? Dude, a, a pinky toe, it's like I've fought with so much injuries. Like Connor said, he fought with a lot of injuries. He doesn't want to. I've fought with a lot of injuries over the years. But a pinky toe doesn't seem like a reason to pull out of a fight, you know? Especially one that's already sold the highest gate in history, which again is one of the reasons why I feel relatively confident this is about pushing it back to the sphere because it just doesn't make sense otherwise. But I also, I don't know, like, given him his respect, I also don't know the severity of it. Like, did he damage ligaments? Is his muscle in his foot? Or You know, I, there's a lot of stuff going on inside of a foot. There's a lot of small bones. So I don't know. If it's just a pinky toe, I think that's kind of, you know, not a reason to pull out of a fight. Look at how, okay. Look at how respectful he is there, dude. Right? Like, you're talking about Dustin Poirier, who fought with in his last fight i'm pretty sure he tore an acl like he broke his whatever like this guy fights through such incredible damage and it's one of those things too where you know for sure there is no way that dustin pulls out of that fight for a broken pinky toe none there's no way he would now what what do you think connor would say about dustin poirier in an identical situation okay let's say that connor had never pulled out of a main event fight like dustin and then Dustin, with the highest gate of all time, pulled out three weeks before. And again, I'm not saying that's really why Connor pulled out, obviously. But let's say, I mean, as far as everybody knows, he pulled out because of a broken pinky toe. Hey, how do you think Connor would have talked about that? You know what I mean? Connor would have lit him up, dude. Absolutely mercilessly. And uh, you are going to see how he talks about the charity shortly because, again, he makes a, a like a, one of the worst, honestly. What is worse than scamming people with charities? Nothing. Okay? The answer is nothing. I'm going to tell you guys a story at the end of this. If I remember, I'll probably forget. But I'll tell you a story about a, uh, a, a charity that I am so confident was a scam. And it's probably still running. I'm not going to say their name on here because I'm just not. I don't, you know. I, if I can't prove it, then I'm not going to say their name. But I'll tell you guys a story of why I think it's a scam. And it's a scam. It's a military scam. Like, uh 
And this, anyway, we'll we'll talk about it, dude. I'll tell you. Uh, I'll tell you exactly why I believe that it's a scam and how di- it's one. Of, it's it's disgusting, dude. It it is disgusting. And uh, I've been waiting to hear that they get indicted for like the last like five six years since I first uh, learned about it, and it just never happens. But anyway, so obviously that's where that's where this is going. Connor's going to say that uh, that Dustin Poirier's charity is a scam. So uh, do I believe this is a scam? No, I do not uh, at all. But, um, okay, so the other, I wanted to show you guys this just because I think this is really fun. Like, Rampage is just fun to uh, fun to watch, but he talks about his beef with Joe Rogan and, you know, where that came from, having to do with leg kicks and stuff. But, like, I don't know, dude. It's just, I, I, I just think Rampage is entertaining, and I, I want to show you guys this clip because I thought this was hilarious. Rampage Jackson apologizes to Joe Rogan. Joe Rogan and Quentin Rampage Jackson had a long-standing history of tension that prevented Rampage from appearing on Rogan's podcast. The rift between the two dated back to Rampage's prime days in the UFC when Rogan, as a commentator, criticized Jackson's technique, pointing out that he was not properly checking or throwing effective leg kicks. The two men have now buried... Dude, Rampage's explanation for why he wasn't checking leg kicks is amazing. ...the hatchet as Rampage recently made an appearance on the Joe Rogan Experience. I got that cover and roll, baby. I yeah. got that cover and roll. Yeah, you've always been defensively responsible like that. Yeah, yeah you're Except covering leg kicks. Like Except leg, yeah. kicks. <laughs> leg kicks. You got mad at me once. But I wanted you to throw more because yeah. your leg kicks are devastating. Yeah. I, I would see when you would hit guys with leg kicks. I was like, damn, I wish Quentin would throw mm-hmm. more leg kicks. I got, to, I got to apologize to you about that. Well, I apologize to you, too. I, yeah. I'm like, it's not personal. I no, just, I know. When I'm looking at you, I'm not thinking of you as a human being when you're it's fighting. God. I know you're a human being, but I'm, I'm looking at, I'm analyzing movements and what I think a guy can do to be more successful. I, I don't I mean, I mean to hurt your feelings. No, you didn't hurt my feelings. It was nothing that you said. I'm going to clear it up for you right now. It wasn't nothing you said. It's the fucking fans. <laughs> they all come, like, when you said it, you kept saying it, they all come to me on my social media, ever since social media. So, I'm going to explain to you, this is, you remember when I was fighting in Pride, I would I would check leg kicks if they was hard, mm-hmm. except for, except for um, Arona. I, I wasn't going to check his leg kicks because it would have hurt my knee. Wow, uh, but I would check the leg kicks if they, if they were hard. But if people in the UFC they wasn't really kicking that hard. Really? No, their leg their leg kicks wasn't that hard. So I take them and I try to land a punch. Mm-hmm. But the reason why I wasn't kicking that much is because they would they were desperately trying to take me down. All right, so check this out. Today's top news. Now, obviously, when Rampage says that uh, there's someone in Pride who's le- he's like I wouldn't even check leg kicks. You know, it coming from guys in the UFC because they just weren't coming that hard. I, w- I don't even need to check it, dude. I'm just going to punch him in the face. Well, uh, let me show you guys this. So, like, obviously, I want to show you guys the guy that he's talking about when he says that this dude, he was scared to even check his kicks because he was afraid they were going to hurt his knee, right? So, check this out, dude. All right, this is who he's talking about. He's talking about Ricardo Arona. And uh, here are a couple examples of his... Uh, of his leg kicks that seem notable. This is against and look at look at Alistair Overeem here, dude. Look at how small Alistair Overeem is. Okay, check this out. You can't help him. Never mind. Can't listen because that will definitely demonetize the video. But look at this. Watch as he barely even touches it, and boom, dead dead leg. And then against Vanderlake, bat. Oh, <laughs> that's a Vanderlake Silva, dude. So he's kicking so hard. He's kicking so hard that he literally is afraid to check it because he's afraid it's going to damage his knee, dude. Look at that. Bananas, dude. He kicked so hard. Now, pop quiz, you guys, without me telling you, how did Rampage beat Arona? Do, 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 put it in the comments because it's very famous. He lifted him up when he was in a triangle and smashed his fucking face. Knockout, one of the best highlights of all time. Wow, that was weird. Um, All right, so now I wanted to move over to the Strickland story about, you know, like this is like Strickland and Hamzat, and then I want to show you the, uh, you know, the, the explanation the explanation from the from the scammers after we watch this. Check this. Smash coin controversy. Shimaev have recently found himself embroiled in a controversy after he lent his likeness to the Smash token, which has been suspected of being a pump and dump scheme. Some allege that Shimaev stole upwards of a million dollars from investors of the coin. 
This entire situation hasn't sat well with Sean Strickland, who, taking tags, revealed that he's been approached to make a coin before, but always refused, tweeting, I've been offered a ton of money to do the same exact thing. Crazy man, you're rich and still try to scam your All right, scam you guys his fans. You guys have seen this, dude. Um, so let's just go over here to X. You guys are gonna come with me because I'm practicing now, not uh, not doing any uh, not doing any cuts. I apologize, you guys have to look this up with me, but uh, it just is what it is, man. All right, here it is. Part of the team. Working. So this guy is the one. All right, so this is the dude who like was on the team, the development team for the crypto scam. So this is his explanation. On the smash token uh, that we did as a fan community token to pay homage to Hamzat Shimaev. Uh, we just want to make it clear that we, we were never in direct contact with Hamzat uh, and Hamzat has no direct involvement with the token whatsoever. I believe this. Ever. We were merely in contact with his manager who we sent the videos to of the smash token and we asked him to share them because it's a fan token and it would be fun for the community and for his fans. And that's why his manager agreed. Hey, fun. Fun. Hey, you can buy this token. We'll just steal your money. And nothing else. Uh, regarding the supply, yes, we sniped 80% of the supply uh, and we still own almost 80% of the supply. We did not sell. We did not. We were not the cause of the major downfall that happened in the token. Everything is public. You can track all the wallets. There is no scam that has been happening. It's simply people that bought early that sold very late and took profits and not us. Sold very late. Sold very late and not you guys. Uh, so that's his story, but you will see down here. Uh, that this guy right here, Zach uh, XBT, who's been the one who has been doing all of the investigation. Uh, la, 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 liars. Liars. Okay, just in just in his like preliminary investigation, he found $250,000 of, of profits that these guys sold. So this guy's lying. It's a lie. Do not believe it. It's not true. Uh, anyway, so let's go back over here really quick and uh, let's talk about what Connor said about uh, about Poirier's, uh, what do you call it, charity, because this is, I don't know, it's pretty messed up, dude, to just be like, oh yeah, hey, the charity's a scam. It's like, based on what? You know, like, because there's like, a, there's a lot of things, you know, a lot of like ways people can scam people. I don't think there are any that are more low down and dirty than making people believe that they're donating to a charity that's going to be taking care of children if that's not what they're actually doing and they're just snaking the money, all right? So I'm going to show you guys this. I'm going to show you what Connor said, and then I'm going to tell you the story about uh, the charity that in my, I mean, I have, like, I have, I have, like, someone who worked at this charity. That's why I, like, it never really made a lot of sense to me. Uh, but I'll tell you the story about this military charity that I think is a scam, and it fucking pisses me off. Um, but anyway, so let's watch this really quick. So started! In today's news, Conor McGregor slams Dustin Poirier for a foundation scam. Dustin Poirier recently revealed that Habib Nurmagomedov will purchase his UFC 302 fight outfit... This outfit is from the same bout in which Poirier lost to Islam Makhachev. The diamond claimed that the funds would support his foundation, which aids impoverished individuals. Upon hearing the news, Conor McGregor was not pleased and made some serious accusations against both Poirier and Nurmagomedov, tweeting, by the shorts that he quit in the most important fight of his life, hashtag never been. Scammers, him and the wife, scammers. Broke, scammer alert. Khabib, a terrorist in serious debt with his own country in which he is now exiled from. You can make this shit up. Dustin is a fool, an asshat. That foundation is a scam. Sean Strickland. Okay, so again, right? Like, like Connor will just throw out things like that. Like, that foundation's a scam, you're all. A scam. It's like, yeah, man, it's a scam. And you're like, so he's taking in money, pretending he's going to be helping kids, and then keeping the money. That's right. Uh... Do you have any evidence of that or what? Yeah, I do. What is it? I'm not, I'm not going to tell you, dude. I'm not going to show you. I'm not going to tell you. You don't need to worry about that. I'm like, I mean, if I'm going to believe that he's scamming people, I mean, I would probably need to see like a little bit of evidence. No, you don't need to see no evidence, Jesse on fire. He's a scammer. Fuck you. Fuck Dustin Poirier. All right. Um, okay. Anyway, my point is though that like, it's, it's the dichotomy between the two of them and how they manage just p 
people, but like, okay, actually, let me rewind. I think that Dustin does not see a clear delineation between his words in relation to the fight game and his like real life. You know, like he sees it as one and the same. He is himself walking into the cage. He is going to be Dustin Poirier on the way in. He's going to be Dustin Poirier on the way out. Someone interviews him about the fight or interviews him about another fighter. He's Dustin Poirier the whole time. Connor, I think, sees the, the thing completely differently. I think Connor has his personal life where he's Connor McGregor, and then he has this completely different person. I mean, it's still him, but like the rules of communication, the rules of how he treats people, the rules of all of that stuff are different. Um, you know, when it comes to like other fighters, where he would just make an outright like made up accusation like that because in his mind he's like it's a fight game dude I'm trying to make conflict with that guy so I can get a fight with him and I want to fight with Khabib so I'm going to talk shit all the time and it's basically like dude you can just choose which style you know best it's just like do you know either you know like as a fan it's like do you know Connor they're like nope you're like do you know Dustin they're like nope it's like well which one of them do you find yourself rooting for more you know it's just like it's I mean, at the end of the day, it's a spectator sport. I mean, I personally like, I love them both, man. I really do. I look, I just do. I love them both. But I actually see a lot of good in both of them. Now, Connor has demons, man. Demons. And I've said before, I will say again, go watch Patrick Avia's video that he just put out about Connor. It will really shift your viewpoint of Connor. Like where it's like, oh, wow, this guy like really... He struggled like this guy's got like like he had like mental health struggles. People think of him as just like this, like, fuck you. Yeah, let's go. It's like, no, 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 man. He's just like you, you know, just a little bit more clever. And uh, anyway, watch that video. Nonetheless, uh, in this case, obviously, I prefer Dustin Poirier, who is being respectful and being like, you know, I don't know enough about his foot to like to make any assumptions one way or the other and Connor's all yo man fuck that scammer no evidence anyway but uh all right so here's the story I was going to tell you guys about the uh the uh the military charity I'm not even going to tell you where it's from this bottom line there was a very uh like kind of high profile military charity in one of the areas I lived I honestly don't even want to tell you where I lived and what their charity did does is they supposedly raise money and then they they get um you know different items to forward position you know units that the story is like oh they can't they're not getting this this type of thing from the from the government right like they they'll be like okay yeah you know we're getting we're raising this money for like night vision goggles and we're going to get this to those positions oh you know this time we're getting pallets of this we're getting pallets of water whatever it's like it's it's all you know, going to forward positions or in some cases, just like bases in Afghanistan, they're not getting enough of this. And so we're raising money and sending it over. It's like a very like longstanding uh, military charity where I was at. Here's the thing though, dude, like uh, I knew someone that worked there and uh, they told me that they don't, they didn't have a warehouse uh, and I'm like, so wait, so where are they getting this stuff? Right. And what they told me didn't jive with what was in, you know, it was being kind of like promoted on the website. I'm trying to like really careful not to like even imply which charity this is. Cause I don't want to throw accusations that anybody could track. But, uh, the bottom line is she, fuck she, so yeah, as a girl, she told me things that really did not match with what was on the website. So I was already very, very skeptical. So I looked into it a little bit and the dude who runs the charity, this is all he does. This is his entire like business, right? Like he doesn't like, he's not like working and doing this. This guy lived in the most affluent area in the area. Okay. He had put, put on like on social media, put up that he had just like redone his entire kitchen, like torn it down, rebuilt it. He showed all this stuff in his back. Like bottom line, this guy was living like he had a lot of dough, like a lot of dough. His, his, you know, his background was in, I'm not going to say, but nothing that would lead to having money like this to spend now that you've been running a military charity for the last seven to nine years. Okay. Like nothing. So 
I don't know, dude. It no matter what, if, 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 <laughs> I just don't think there's anything more low down than uh, than charity scams. You know what I mean? Like that is some fucking low down shit, dude. To ta- to raise money for a thing like that and then be taking the money yourself is fucked. Um, I probably said enough, to, you know, I probably said enough about that because, uh, there's plenty more I could say, but nothing I could say without, you know, pointing a finger and I don't have direct evidence except that just it, everything about it smelled wrong to me. And I'm usually pretty fucking good at that. Anyway, that's what I got. I love you guys. Subscribe to the channel. Ring the bell. Bye-bye.